Hi everyone, this is Daniel Hamby. Um, I'm just going to take a second to talk about uh, my film, uh, Stars in Our Darkness. Just get starting right off the bat, that was actually the first time the Anthem World logo has ever popped up on screen. We ended up getting up at 5.30 for two mornings to get these shots here. Um, it was in the middle of summer in June, so the sun rose really early and I'm very thankful my crew was willing to get up then, but it was crucial that we filmed this as naturally as we could. And the results speak for themselves. Um, the whole tone of this movie is set by these few shots, so it's so important that we got them right. This uh, actor right here that just popped on the screen actually appeared in my other film, Doppelganger. Uh, his name is J.D. Mallory. He always gives 100% every time I've ever worked with him. That is probably the thing I look for the most when it comes to the actors. Dedication is probably just as important as their performance. The actor on the right um, that you saw at the beginning of the film, uh, his name is Jim Chandler. Uh, I actually had not met Jim until we shot this scene that you're looking at right now. Um, I had met him through uh, a friend of mine named Chris McNilly. Um, he is an actor and comedian, but he knew of Jim um, and he introduced me to him. I, I called Jim on the phone. We ended up talking for like an hour or so, and I sent him the script, he liked it, and he was cast. And I didn't meet him until we shot this scene. I don't recommend doing that. I've had that backfire on me before, but in this case, um, Jim really embodied this character. He did such a good job. The idea for this film kinda came about maybe a year and a half um, before we shot the film. Um, we shot the film in 2015, so I'm guessing I probably started writing this. It actually might have been early 2014 when I wrote it. But basically, it was, um, I just started seriously dating my wife now, and so obviously the thoughts of conversations of what something like this might be like. My, just to, for the record, my father-in-law was not um, as intense as Jim is being right now at all. Um, that is a funny story that I'll have to tell another time. Um, this is uh, Ruthie Novak here. I had met her through a producer friend. This is her first film she's acted in. She had done some plays and things like that. She did a great job. Also, just for using the resources that you have access to, her mom made that dress that she is wearing. Also, JD, he's not in this scene, but he built that swing literally two or three hours before we did this shot. He's also a great location scout. He found this lake location for us to use in some of the other scenes as well, so he was a great resource to have. This shot right here took forever for me to figure out how to do. Those stars in that shot are fake. Um, obviously, you can't get that exposure correct at all if you were to try to do that naturally, but you know, I'd spent probably weeks on it, and then, um, of course, as things go, I found a solution on YouTube that took care of it in like three minutes, maybe, you know, at most. So, Graham Yuhelski owned the telescope that we used. He's our DP. And it really just goes to show that you, um, it just helps to ask people what they have and own, because you can put those things in your film and it increases your production value, even though you may have not spent very much money uh, making the film. We shot the film with the Red Dragon uh, 6K which we were able to use through the production company Graham and I used to work for. But the time-lapse stars and the star background that you saw earlier, we got with the A7S, which is a small mirrorless camera, but it's phenomenal in the light and it shoots great time-lapses. Um, so it really just goes to show you don't need really expensive equipment to get a lot of production value. A lot of the dialogue actually was re-recorded ADR. We actually recorded it in my car, which uh, makes a great sound booth. I think actually Jim taught me that trick. So that's just a glimpse of her. We're going to see more of her in a second, but that is, or was, Megan Keith. It is now Megan Mallory. Um, JD and Megan were dating at the time, and luckily enough, I got JD to talk her into being a part of the film. I think it really did help make it feel more realistic that these two characters um, loved each other. Actually, one fun fact, um, we did a fake proposal, which ended up being cut from the film at the top of this mountain here. 
in a way, I think I kind of predicted the future there. So, fun fact for you. And it changed how I viewed the world. It is not raining for real that day. Um, there's obviously no way we could have gotten that to work with the camera and everything. Of trouble. Um, my wife is holding a garden hose. The hose was actually too short, so she's kind of at a distance. And she is just pointing it to the sky, and it is falling down on them um, like so. And it's backlit. Again, JD and Megan are 100% committed to this film, and they were soaking wet for at least a couple hours. So that's dedication right there. That's what you want in your talent. Her happiness. Um, this scene here is directly inspired um, so by a movie Internal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, um, which it may be clicking for some of you now. Um, even with the star stuff that you saw earlier with them laying down on the blanket, that a lot of that was inspired by that movie as well. But it is one of those movies I just think of as one of my favorite films of all time, and it's kind of an homage to. Uh, sure. that film and how it inspired me as a filmmaker. This part right here where JD gets up, uh, originally he just walks away, um, but it wasn't working in the moment. Um, and so we were kind of experimenting and um, just the action right there of him putting the ring box down on the bench really changed that the dynamics of the scene. Um, that's one of my favorite things uh, on set is when or directing no. even, it's just when we come up with little moments on the spot like that, it, it makes it really exciting. This uh, crash scene here, um, we actually, is a reverse shot. So my wife's car is parked up real close to JD's car, and then we're both pulling back in reverse, and then we just flip the clip in post. Um, so that's how you get that effect. The ashes are actually from my dad's grill, uh, just sitting on the bottom of it. I still get emails from Perfect Memorials, uh, the company I bought that urn from. That ring is super fake. No actual expensive things were lost into the lake. In fact, we actually threw rocks into the lake, not the actual props themselves. I would say this film benefited from editing. Um, I probably cut 20 to 30 percent of everything that we shot. Um, like this film ended a little bit differently. There was definitely more dialogue, but I think the key to editing for me is just cutting out the crap that is either making it more cheesy or it's just not working on screen. You can't be precious with these things. This is what I've learned. It's, it's just funny. I think some of the one of the better advice I've heard is cut it down to as much as you think you can and then cut 30% of that. What I learned, I think, most on this film is just to trust your gut. It really will lead you true to where you need to go. Also, don't be timid about asking for help on your film. You'll be surprised how many people will want to be a part of it. Yeah, that's the that's the film right there. I feel like there's so many stories to tell, it's kind of hard to, to shove it all into this one commentary. but. I think it gives you an idea of kind of what we went through to make the film and and put it all together. So I'm 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 still very happy with how it turned out. Anyway, thanks for watching this audio commentary. If you want to keep up with what I'm doing, you can follow me on Instagram at Anthem Cry, or you can subscribe to this YouTube channel um, and um, follow along with what I'm doing. Anyway, thanks so much, y'all. Talk to y'all soon.